all right so our products are looking nice on home page now it's time to add them to cart and proceed to checkout so whenever user hits add to cart i will send the request to route to controller that will perform the add to cart action all right so for that i will make a link called add to cart so let's go to terminal and create new controller named at named cart controller so psp artisan make controller i'll call it cart controller and i'll create add to cart route i'll duplicate it and add to cart which will go to cart controller and add method and i'll name the route cart dot add there we go so add to cart route will accept a placeholder which is the product id so whenever we do add to cart and send request with the product id that will add the cart to our session so let's create that method add which will accept the product id let's type on this product id just to test if that will work now let's go to home page and update the link so home page we got add to cart and in hrf we will give the route name so route card dot add and then we have to supply the product id right now let's refresh the page and test add to cart yeah so route is pointing to right direction so we are passing product id and then we have to find the product 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 find product id so this will find the product so there is one cool step called route model binding so if you give like this product then instead of giving like product id in your controller what you can do is you can type hint the product class product and then name it product so laravel will automatically inject product model for you if you do like so so for that to match this variable name should match this route parameter so let's test again so of course we have to import this product class import class up here now let's refresh so it will give us whole product model we don't need to find it separately so at this point we have product now what we'll do is add to cart action so here we'll save these this product to cart so that we can display that cart item to the user so in, in order to integrate cart functionality what we have two options we can use database directly create our own cart table and perform all crud operations all or manually create uh, it on session so we'll not build it from scratch since someone already built there are good package uh, let's search for so there is one with this daryl code so it is maintained looks good so i'll use this package let's pull this package in composer require open terminal let's wait for it to finish all right so package is installed all right let's see what this package has to offer us so here is documentation page we can see we can add new item to cart like this method simply call the add method and supply all the attributes that we want to put inside we can update like so we can delete basically we can perform all card operation and if we need all card contents we can do like so all right so let's integrate it into our project 
so here in card controller add method we will so in order to add card we can bind that card to particular user so that that particular card will be associated with the logged in user so what we'll do is we'll require the authentic user to authenticate in order to access this route so we can do guest checkout as well uh, meaning we don't require user to authenticate it in order to add item to card that can be option but so this is um, uh, better in my opinion because whenever someone else log in into same browser he or she will also so see the card item that previous user that is using this browser has added so if we bind if we make user authenticated then only authenticated user can add or see his or her card items all right so now if you try to access this endpoint you you will redirect you will be redirected to the login page here you can log in there we go all right so at this point we have product now let's add the product to cart I'll copy the code here okay so first thing we need to bind this to authenticated user auth ID will give us the ID of authenticated user and then we have to generate a unique row ID so we got unique ID function offered by PHP we can use that to generate a unique row ID and we can prefix it with product ID to make it more unique or you, you can simply pass product ID that will also make it unique since product ID won't be repeating yeah let's do that just pass in product ID and name a product and the price of product so associated model will be product and you can also pass in additional attribute which we'll do later on the course like we have to pass in size color etc so that will be quite easier we can we can get them from form data we can do like request size or color yeah that can be option you can pass in as a form from the endpoint okay so we associated the card to the authenticated user and then add the product that user clicked into cart that's it so after cart has been added what we can do is we can redirect redirect back or we can take user to cart index page or card display page now let's create card display page where we can list all the edit cart items so I will create another method called index so index will display all cart items so right now I will just return view named cart dot index so I'll create that blade view inside card folder let's do that go to resources views so inside views I will create new folder called cart and inside it I will add new file called index.blade.php there we go so this file will extends and inside content for now I'll just, just display as to your cart all right and now let's define route in web.php so that user can visit that route okay okay so route name will be slash cart with name card dot index which is pointing to index method and now let's create uh, let's put that link up here here on navigation navbar we'll put that cart icon 
so that navigation bar is inside layouts app so this is responsible for displaying that we'll add nav bar left side or yeah we can put it in right side like here we can copy one ally like so and here we can call it cart and route will be card dot index there we go and if we hit card it should take us to your card all right so i'll wrap everything inside container so that it will look a bit nicer there we go okay so instead of returning back in add method we'll redirect user to this card index page so that he or she can see card so the way we redirect is using redirect method and then call route card dot index let's go to home page let's add to cart yeah so we need to import this right click import class so the class is imported if we refresh again it should take us to all right so here is slightly problem so if you import like this it will import this class and if you try to access this it will throw some error so the way uh, way to import this cart item is you can just put in slash in front of it and then you can easily add that all right so make sure you add slash in front of cart so that will automatically import it from global namespace which will be using the card facade instead of the class that we imported previously okay so that's it we can import card and now let's go to card index space in this space we will display the card content so cart index space here will loop through cart contents so we can get cart contents like so so for now let's die dump cart contents slash cart get contents so method to get contents is yeah just get content not contents my bad There you go so right now we do not have any item to cart so right now it is not showing item uh, we have some item into cart but it is not showing, not showing because we have bind that cart to the authenticated user so in order to access as well we need to access like so so we can do session and inside session we have to give the authenticated users id all right so that way we can get all cart items like so okay so here we get cart items you can pass it from controller as well instead of just putting that inside plate view which is not good practice so i will call it cart items and get all cart items from controller and then pass it here so you can use compact method as well to pass the data cart items so this will pass this cart item to index view let's go back and generate for each b for each cart items as item and i will create b4 table and name of product price quantity okay so i'll need just one row and this for each should be applied on so this row should be repeated right that's why this for each should be inside here table row okay so here we can display 
item name price quantity like so so there we go we can see our cart items so by default let's put quantity one and in cart index let's make this the form field so that user can update cart items right so i'll create input field with number so default value will be this value cart item so from here we can increase or decrease item and also we'll add here action to remove the cart items individual item so let's put one more header named action like so and here also create table data and then here we'll create a button or link to delete item okay let's put delete functionality in place first so whenever someone hits delete it should delete this item so this delete should point to some route so i will call this route cart dot destroy and we will pass the item id so with this id this id will be unique we will destroy the cart item so this route we have to define now let's go to web and duplicate this route and i will call cart dot destroy cart destroy and i'll call uh, i'll create a destroy method card destroy and then we have to pass which will be the item id let's go to cart controller and create new method named destroy which will accept the item id like so and we can simply remove item by calling remove method let's see if that is yeah like so we can call remove method and then pass in item id so this will remove the item and we will redirect user back back to same page so now let's test and let's delete this bottom one there we go all right so next we implement this quantity increase or decrease functionality so the way we do it is using so whenever someone hits up or down or basically we have to listen for this change event so whenever someone changes something we will send the request to server and update the item you can put a save button here as well that will update the quantity now let's do that so there we go we got save button and we have to wrap this inside form and this form should point us to so this should point us to route card dot add route which we already created previously and inside there we have two form fields for now let's and let's give the name of quantity there we go so whenever someone updates quantity and hit save it will update the item so right now item id contains product id or you can create new route card dot update and then yeah let's create update route it will be reusable in future as well okay to update item we have to create this card dot update method and we have to pass the row id okay in controller we need to create that update method date row id will accept row id and to update let's see in documentation we can simply call this update method like so so row id and then quantity will get from request and after updating let's return back now let's test that out so currently we got seven items 
yeah so update is not defined we have to define that route as well right so duplicate this car dot update update so right now it is uh, seven let's make it two and do save mm, looks like something is wrong so after putting code to update the quantity let's go back and the update quantity part is slightly tricky so if you want to make it uh, like three so here is already six right so if you want to make it three then save instead of updating it will just add that quantity so in documentation it is saying that if you do like so it will add the current quantity it will add to the current quantity so whatever the quantity is, it will add the new one so in order to completely replace from the form so if you want to reduce just to minus one so in our case we want to replace whatever the quantity in cart with our quantity from the form this form so in that case what we should do is like so so quantity should be array and make the relative fo false like so so array then make relative false and then value from request quantity so now if we update it should update like desired let's make it three save it there we go let's make it one there we go let's update it to seven save it it's working perfectly all right so once uh, item quantity is updating what we'll do next is according to item we should update price as well so if for three item what should be the price yeah, you can do like so if update it should update whenever save it should update this price as well so in package what you can do is like so get the cart item and get price sum method so you can call this method which will do the you can also get the sum of item multiplied by its quantity so we'll show that in here instead of this price will show the total price summed summed price let's open up cart get item so first we should get the users item so item id will be item id get price sum there we go so for one item save it this is the price for two item it should multiply by two there we go yeah like so and next up here we should show the total quantity cart contents or cart items over here so in order to do that let's go so here is another method to do that you can call cart total quantity like so just copy it into our layout app and we are showing cart navigation item where is that so here is that and here inside a tag we will create a badge bootstrap badge and inside here we'll display should echo that out so user id of course is auth id so it is summing up these two or if you don't want to display these quantity you want to just display two items what you can do is you can instead of getting total quantity you can just uh, get content and then count that content like so which will display two item there we go 
go to home page add next item it should make three and here item we can update item with price like so so over here let's display the total price so we can get total like so and in cart index file so just below this we'll display display in s3 total price let's put dollar sign so this is the total price and now let's put here proceed to checkout button so before button I'll say it proceed to check out there we go so this this should take us to next checkout page which will cover on next video so right now we are good to go we have implemented a card functionality So I think we missed here to display the price of product in home page. You can easily show that in home. Yeah, you can display below here in S3 tag product price. There we go. And make this badge danger so that we can get red icon over here. We can also import a font awesome some 5 CDN we just need CSS just go to CSS and just copy the all dot mean CSS and in app dot blade here in head section we'll import that font awesome icon and if you go to font awesome website where we can get a cart icon so just search for cart so we can add so let's use this icon so you can use icon like so just copy it like so and let's go to our cart up here so i will add icon before this text just paste that there and let's refresh it yeah we should say cart so you can change color of that cart using text primary or danger you can also make size like uh, fa2x which will make it twice bigger so making it bigger will just slightly remove the styling what you can do is give this link class padding 0 and margin also 0 just reset the default styling of a tag and it will fix everything like so so I'll remove this cart just put the icon like so okay so this is our cart functionality so let me know on comment section how you are liking it what uh, what changes should I make or am I going on slow pace or yeah please supply feedback which will help to improve this series and i will see you on next video bye